AI-powered weaponry could become reality sooner than you might think, as ChatGPT opens the eyes of politicians to what AI is capable of. We're gonna look into what the market leader in AI weaponry is working on, but first we have a bunch of other news to talk about. This is Blaj, you're watching AI Innovations, and first up on our radar is eBay rolling out an AI tool that generates product listings based on photos. Currently it's only available on the iOS app, with the Android version coming in a few weeks. The tool takes your photo and generates a title, description, and even other information like the product release date. It'll also suggest a category, subcategory, list price, and shipping costs. eBay already has some AI tools, like AI-generated product catalog descriptions that are built on OpenAI's language model, and a background removal tool for listing photos. They say that this new tool is targeted towards first-time sellers as they are usually overwhelmed by the amount of data that they need to enter to create a competitive listing. This will make it so that they don't have to enter it at all. I think there are a bunch of websites that could benefit from this. I'm looking at you, Fiverr. There have been a lot of complaints from seasoned sellers, though. The article in TechCrunch points out that there has been a lot of criticism about the low quality of the text made by the description generator, which was only available in limited tests so far. One user claimed that it's misleading and even untruthful. Another complained that it restates the title and item specifics, which adds bloat and makes them too long. A third said that by the time he got done fixing and shortening a description, he could have written it himself. So there seems to be quite a big problem with hallucinations with this tool. This is a common and well-known problem of large language models, which means that, yes, you do have to review the content when you have a use case like eBay's. This is an unfortunate reality at this point. The flip side to this is that a lot of this can probably be avoided if eBay manages to improve the internal prompts behind the description generator. Again though, they did say that this tool is targeted at new sellers, which will definitely help them with the writing descriptions and the product data. I just hope most of them are able to pick up on the possible hallucinations. Guys, are you a seller on eBay and have you tried this tool already? Make sure to tell me about your experience in the comments below. Oh, and as ChatGPT puts it, give that like button a gentle AI nudge, hit the subscribe with the precision of a well-coded algorithm, and activate notifications by ringing the bell icon like you're summoning the future of technology. What? Next up, Anthropic has announced the launch of its own premium subscription plan for their Cloud2 large language model. The subscription plan is called Cloud Pro and has a monthly cost of $20 in the US. Now, doesn't that sound a bit familiar? If you don't know, Anthropic is OpenAI's rival when it comes to large language models, and many people have compared Cloud2's performance to that of GPT-4. The advantage of Cloud2 that Anthropic promotes is its longer context window. It can work with up to 100,000 tokens compared to GPT-4's 32,000, so roughly three times the word count. With Cloud Plus, Anthropic promises users five times more usage compared to the free tier. The ability to send many more messages, priority access to Cloud2 during high traffic periods, and early access to new features. They clarified that Cloud Pro users will be able to send at least 100 messages every 8 hours compared to GPT-4's 50 every 3 hours. If you divide that up into messages per 1 hour, by the way, GPT-4 allows for roughly 30% more messages per hour. Now guys, remember that monetizing this is actually important for AI businesses to stay in operation. We've mentioned in previous videos that at some point OpenAI was paying roughly $700,000 daily to keep ChatGPT running. I imagine it's the same for Anthropic. Anthropic, which launched in 2021, has raised $1.45 billion, but is expected to need around $5 billion over the next two years for training its model. Most of the money from Cloud Plus will be going into the GPU infrastructure. I'm really disappointed Cloud2 still hasn't been released outside the US and UK after all this time. What are they waiting for? They're missing out on a large portion of the market. If you've managed to use Cloud2, how does it compare to GPT-4? Do you find it more reliable? Let me know. A company called Glass Health is building an AI tool that helps with medical diagnoses. Founded by Derek Paul and Graham Ramsey in 2021, Glass Health currently provides physicians a notebook to store, organize, and share their approaches for diagnosing and treating conditions. In early 2023, though, the company decided to refocus its efforts into generative AI, which has seen a massive rise this year. They now offer a large language model-based AI tool that generates diagnoses and what they call evidence-based treatment options to consider for patients. Doctors can type in a description of the patient and their symptoms, and the model will generate a list of 5 to 10 diagnoses that the doctor could consider. 
I think this is a good approach. It would be really dangerous for the model to just output a single most likely diagnosis. I don't think it should even state how likely any of them are. That should decrease the doctor's bias towards these results. There is a lot of scrutiny surrounding generative AI in medicine though. They've been notorious for handing out bad and even dangerous health advice. I do hope, however, that they can be improved soon. Doctors should also be trained to use them responsibly. Glass Health is aware of this scrutiny and assured that their AI is already superior to many of the current solutions on the market. The model connects to clinical guidelines written and peer-reviewed by their academic physician team, and they emphasize that the model should be treated as an assistant that can offer recommendations and options to consider, but should never replace the doctor's clinical judgment. TechCrunch points out that the doctors themselves could be biased towards the patient's race, gender, or socioeconomic status when typing out the patient data into the model, and the model's diagnosis would reflect that. But I think that's exactly where the model could shine. I'd argue that the information that they call biased could be important for diagnoses and should absolutely be considered by doctors and the model when it makes sense. My point is, you could design the model to either point out any possible bias from the doctor or take the data into consideration if it has reason to believe that it might be causing certain symptoms. Some diseases are more common in certain races and genders. For example, based on a paper by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, black females have a four times higher chance of dying due to asthma than white males, and Puerto Ricans are more than twice as likely to have asthma than white Americans. I think doctors being replaced by highly trained AI models is just a question of time, especially considering how notoriously bad public medicine is in some countries, where doctors are barely motivated to actually care for the patients. The downside to this model is that these very doctors could misuse it due to the pure laziness and just pick a diagnosis that is handily generated for them by an AI. Do you think this could be a problem? Would you trust an AI model over a doctor? In another short but significant story this week, the Indian company Geo Platforms, a subsidiary of Reliance Industries, has partnered with NVIDIA to build their own large language model trained on India's diverse languages. This is quite significant as India has yet to make a mark in the global AI market, despite being the world's most populous country. That means this move by Reliance Industries will be locally completely uncontested. What's also important is that India has taken a different approach with AI regulation in that it won't be regulating it at all. This news can be dated all the way back to April, so it's interesting to see it took this long to make a move in the space after such an AI-friendly decision. The AI infrastructure they plan to build will apparently be over an order of magnitude more powerful than the fastest supercomputer in India today, and will be equipped with NVIDIA's GH200 Grace Hopper Superchip, DGX Cloud, and frameworks for crafting advanced AI models. I'm really surprised that a country so well known for its powerful world-class tech sector has taken this long to make a move. It'll be interesting to see if they'll be able to catch up with the rest of the world. Moving on, I'd like to quickly mention that OpenAI has announced its first developer conference called OpenAI Dev Day, which will be taking place on November 6th in San Francisco. It'll apparently be a one-day event where developers from around the world and the team at OpenAI will be previewing new tools and exchanging ideas. Make sure to sign up at the link in their blog post if you want to learn more. In our last story, Palmer Lucky, the founder of Anduril, said in an interview with Breaking Defense that AI tools like ChatGPT have made politicians more comfortable with AI. He says that ChatGPT has been more helpful to Anduril's business than any technology in the last 10 years. He also clarified, by the way, that ChatGPT isn't actually running any of their products, it's just generating interest. If you don't know, Anduril builds military technology like drones, surveillance towers, and underwater vehicles that are powered by their AI software system called Lattice. Anduril has also announced recently the acquisition of Blue Force Technologies, which is developing an autonomous fighter jet that will in fact be running on Lattice. There are a few benefits of AI-driven vehicles like the Fury fighter jet. Since it doesn't need to accommodate a squishy human to operate it, it can be much smaller, lighter, faster, have much less equipment on board, and most importantly, doesn't put the operator in danger. I can't say the same for the targets though. Besides the recent acquisition, it seems Anduril is becoming a leader in high-tech military equipment. By 2019, they signed contracts with more than a dozen agencies of the Department of Defense and the Department of Homeland Security. 
Last year, they won a billion dollar contract with Special Operations Command. And in 2020, they won a 250 million contract from the US Customs and Border Protection to build a virtual wall of AI-powered surveillance technology to monitor border crossings. There has been some backlash though. John Talon, which studies existential risks of AI technologies, said that putting AI in the military makes it very hard to control AI's trajectory, because at that point you are in a literal arms race. I think that's a very good point. It's a well-known fact that war is an insanely good driver of technological advancement. The problem he points out is that if we advance AI too quickly, we might be too late with important regulations that keep it under control. It's also scary to think where AI could take us in warfare. I've even heard of talks about putting nuclear missile launches under the control of AI systems. Scary. Anyway, this concludes this week's AI News Roundup. Make sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you enjoyed the video. If you want to watch last week's video, click the video on screen now. You can also check out the other video YouTube thinks you might like. Thank you for tuning in, my name is Blaj and this is AI Innovations.